Hey guys, in this video, I have the new iRangex IRX4 Plus courtesy of uh, Banggood. They sent this to me for review, so I'd like to thank them for letting me share this with you. Links to this item will be in the description if you're interested in picking one up. So included in this uh, box here, you will find that it comes with a um, essentially the, the antenna, um, the module itself, uh, right here. And there's some instructions uh, that it comes with, as well as some of these uh, headers um, for, I guess, the circuit board inside. And this module here is um, basically here's the new one and here's the older one. And they look very similar, but I think the new one is definitely better built. And the, the plastic's a little better made. And the casing in general. Uh, fits a lot better into the back of the transmitter bay, right? The other one, when you stick it in, it's kind of hard to take out. But with this one, it actually is easier to take out. It's really simple. You just take this thing off. You put the antenna on there and stick it on the back of the your transmitter. And this one clicks in much nicer than before. And uh, it's got these tabs so that you can easily remove it. So the previous one, if you if you have the previous iRange X, if you were to stick this in here, like so, it's really hard to get out. There's no tabs for the grab. So what you have to do is pull on the antenna to pull it out. So they really did a better job by upgrading this um, the case on this. And now you have these tabs on the side that allow you to quick take it out a lot easier. And this way you can put it in, say, the uh, FR Sky Tyrannus, and it will also work, of course, in a Turnigy 9XR Pro. And again, fits in there too with a 9XR Pro. This is the latest and greatest of the STM32 4-in-1 multi-modules. I'll briefly explain what it does. Basically, the module contains four RF chips used to communicate with your RC models. It allows you to control almost every model out on the market. It supports most of the protocols used in the RC hobby, from DSM to FlySky to Hubson. With this module installed, you only need one transmitter to control everything, and you can put away all those crappy stock radios. Even though there are transmitters coming out that have multi-protocol support built in, like the Jumper T8SG or iRange X's IR8M, it's still a great option if you're looking to use more robust transmitters like the FR Sky Tyrannus. This is an updated version of the older IRX4. It offers a couple of improvements. It still comes with a nice case, and the most obvious improvements over the previous iterations is the built-in USB port for updating, as well as a selector for protocols when using it in PPM mode. It's still based on the STM32 MCU and has enough memory to store all the protocols that are known at the time of this video. So by default, this module works in serial mode. Serial mode allows protocol selection via the menu of your radio. With the selector at zero, Serial mode will be active. Serial mode is the best way to use this module. If your transmitter runs firmware that natively supports this module, it means you can select protocols from the transmitter's menu. As long as you have the latest version of OpenTX or ER Sky 9X that has multi-module multi support, this is the preferred mode. PPM mode is for transmitters that don't have native firmware support, in which case protocol selection is done by turning the knob on the back. PPM is limited by the number of positions on the selector. Each of the 15 positions represents a different protocol. In terms of setup, nothing really has changed. I'll run through the steps to update your transmitter to the latest version of OpenTX and configure a simple model setup for the Isheen E10. To update your transmitter to the latest version of OpenTX, the first thing we need to do is download OpenTX Companion, which allows you to download OpenTX firmware. Click on the latest version and it will bring you to the release notes. Scroll down to the bottom and download the SD card contents, which contains all the necessary files for your SD card. Next, you want to download OpenTX Companion for your operating system. I'm going to download the Windows version, but they also have Linux and Mac available as well. Decompress the SD card contents, and then what you want to do is copy them to your micro SD card. Next, you want to install OpenTX Companion by launching the executable. 
click next, 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 and then run through the installation. It should take a couple of minutes. And then once it has finished, what you can do is hit the finish button to launch OpenTX Companion. You may get this error about not being able to update. Click OK for now. First thing we need to do is create a new radio profile. So go into the settings section, radio profiles, add radio profile. And this is where we're going to create a new radio profile for your transmitter. So I'm going to create one for the Tyrannus QX7. You can create one for the QX7S or whatever radio you want. But you want to make sure you have the right radio type selected. And next you want to make sure that multi-module is selected as well in the build options. If you don't do this, your multi-module will not work. So make sure you check that off. And for the other settings, you want to make sure you have mode 2 and default channel order is AETR and have that selected. I also have a pen version number to firmware file name and then click OK. And after creating the radio profile, we can start to download OpenTX for your transmitter. So click the download button at the top and uh, make sure everything is correct and then click download firmware. Now, if you get this error message, it's actually very easy to fix. So what you have to do is go into your settings, click settings, click settings again, and then what you want to do is click the applications tab and right there you'll see an option to enable uh, OpenTX nightly builds. After enabling those options you should be able to download it again. So go back to the main screen and then hit download and then click download firmware and it should pop up asking you where you want to save it and the error message should be gone. And after it finishes downloading, you want to copy this to your micro SD card. So I'm going to quickly go through this process again to create a radio profile for the Turnigy 9XR Pro. Again, it's very similar to the previous steps I showed you. Insert the micro SD card with the latest firmware file. To start the flashing process, push in the trim buttons while turning on the transmitter and then you'll get the option to write firmware. Select that option by using the dial and then pushing down on it. And then you want to select the right firmware. So make sure you have the firmware for your X7 and not the other one or else bad things could happen. So double check that you have the right bin file and then select it with the button by pressing it down. And once you do that, there should be a prompt that says hold ENT to start. So hold that button down for a few seconds and it should start writing. And this should be pretty quick. So after it's done writing the new firmware, what you want to do is hit that button again and then go exit. And if everything was done correctly, it should boot up in OpenTX and press any key to continue. So now what we're going to do is check to make sure that it does have the latest version or the version that we did flash. So hold down the center menu button on the left and then you want to hit the page button on the left until you get to version. And this is where you can check that you have the, um, the version that you flashed. Now we need to set the default channel order. So uh, go to radio setup and then go all the way to the bottom and keep on turning the dial. It should be near the bottom and this is where you can set the uh, default channel order as well as your mode. So in my case I have AETR and mode 2. Insert the micro SD card with the latest firmware file. Flashing on the Turnigy 9XR Pro is a very similar process. Again hold down the trim buttons, the inner trim buttons while turning it on and that should do it. This will put it into the bootloader where you can select the option to write uh, the firmware. Scroll down with the cursor and select the right uh, firmware file for the 9XR Pro and double check that before you hit the menu button. To confirm, choose yes and then it should start flashing the firmware. Once it's done flashing, hit the exit button and it will uh, exit the bootloader. After flashing, check to see that you have the latest version by going to the radio setup menu. While you're still in the radio setup menu, make sure you set the default channel order by selecting, in my case, it's AETR. And this is where you can also uh, change your mode. So I'm going to change it to uh, mode 2, which is what I'm used to.
Now it's time to set up a simple model configuration. So select create model in an empty slot and then hit page and give your model a name. For the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna enter a very simple name, but try to uh, make it more descriptive whenever possible. Since the Tyrannus X7 has an actual internal module, we're gonna have to disable that so that it doesn't interfere with the four in one multi-module. So go to internal RF and turn that off. And for external RF, you wanna change that to MULT. And this is where you can select the various protocols after that is selected. And in my case, I'm gonna set one up for the Esheen E10, which uses the MJXQ protocol. And the subtype is E010, which makes it very easy. And what I do also is I turn on auto bind and that should be it in terms of the setup configuration. And as we go through all the other pages, the only thing you really wanna double check is the inputs. Make sure that it is AETR, and uh, that looks about right at 100. The same thing with the mixer, and that looks correct as well. And over here in outputs, this is where you can reverse channels. Select the channel you wanna reverse, hit edit, and go into the option for direction. And this is where you can actually set the, um, whether it's reversed or not. So invert. So for example, if your ailerons go right when you hit the stick left and they go left when you hit the stick right, you will have to reverse the channels to get them in the right direction. So after setting up a model, we're gonna bind it to the Ishin E10. So plug up your battery and the lights should be flashing really fast and this tells you that you're in bind mode. Go to your transmitter and start the bind and once the lights stop blinking, it tells you that the model is bound to the transmitter and if you move the throttle stick, the model should respond and that's when you know that it is bound. The RX4 Plus should work out of the box, but should you ever need to update the actual 4-in-1 module itself, you have several options. I'll briefly talk about the methods, but I plan to discuss it more in depth in a future video. The first method is flashing it just like the previous IRX4 using an FTDI serial programmer and connecting it to the TX, RX, and ground connections on the 4-in-1 circuit board. Unfortunately, they didn't solder the headers onto the circuit board, so you will have to do this first. Check out my other videos for more information on this process. The other method is via USB. The RX4 Plus has a mini USB port. However, it's not active until you load a bootloader with an FTDI USB programmer at least once by updating the firmware. It's unfortunate they didn't have that ready out of the box. And finally, the third method is to flash it directly from the transmitter itself. However, this method is currently only supported by ERSky 9X firmware, so this may not be an option for most users. The plus version of the IRX4 is an improvement over the previous model and it's the latest and greatest. If you have the previous IRX4 module, this will be a minor upgrade with the addition of the USB port and PPM mode. Both will be able to control the same RC models in your fleet. If you don't have one yet, get the plus model since it's the best one at the moment. Upcoming transmitters like the Jumper T8SG or iRange X's IR8M will have the multi-module capabilities built in. However, like I've mentioned before, the IRX4 Plus in combination with a top tier transmitter like an FR Sky Tyrannus might be a better option if you like a more full featured radio. This new IRX4 Plus is a great module to add to your collection so you can fly almost any indoor or toy aircraft that you might run into as you grow your fleet. If you have any of the older multi-protocol 4-in-1 modules, check out my previous videos about them. Links to everything I mentioned should be in the description if you're interested in picking them up. Share, comment, like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.